Hi guys, I'm Dylan. I'm a team shooter and employee of Utah Air Guns. As you can see, we have the all new Pantera in front of us. Uh, there's been a lot of videos you guys have seen from FX talking about how it's a competition built rifle. It's very purpose built. Um, you'll see a lot of different things on this rifle that you might not see on the other FX rifles. Um, one of the coolest things about it is there's so many accessories you can add to this gun to personalize it and make it work for you. Uh, there's hardly any limitations, like you have a long rail space, all that. I've used, I mean, I've used this gun the past three weeks at three different matches, shot 1800 plus rounds through it. And, you know, I just wanted to give you guys my experience, why I set it up the way I did and how it helps me out on the range. Basically, when this gun came out, FX mentioned that this is not a gun built like their other guns. This is a purpose-built rifle. So setting it up, there are some different things you would do to it that you wouldn't necessarily have done to your Wildcat or your Impact or Maverick or whatever. So let's just go over a few of those things. So we'll start here at the rear of the rifle. You have a length of pull adjustment. Uh, for me, I have really long arms, so I have ran mine all the way out. Coming a little bit more forward, I have, there's an adjustable cheek riser here. And what I've done is I added some bolts that match the stock bolts, like the thread pitch. And I threaded those in and I cut them to a length that would allow my cheek weld to be where it needs to be to look into my scope properly. Uh, that's very important when you're doing precision rifle shooting because all of your We'll say your mannerisms and how you approach the rifle, they should be pretty close to the exact same every time you take a shot. That being said, every time you take that shot, you should be looking into your scope perfectly. This allows my cheek to get higher than the stock one did, and that's a very important thing. <clears throat> Especially, I'm using these high mounts, which hold the center of my scope way higher than most rifles. You do need that extra adjustment there, at least I do. I have my skinny cheeks here, and that allowed me to make that perfect cheek weld so I can look into my scope. Um, got a little nice bottle cover here. I mean, who doesn't like swag? And protecting their bottle from dings and dents. You're dealing with high pressure, so I just want to keep things safe and looking cool. We do have a custom-made magazine holder for easy access. When you're in a stage, sometimes you'll have 15 round, maybe even up to 30 round stages on those unlimited ones. And having an extra magazine on deck is a very smart idea when you're shooting in competition. There's nothing worse than running out of rounds on the clock and you gotta load a new mag or whatever. Um, another cool thing that we've got here is a magazine adapter. So what that will do is fill up the space in your mag well that isn't taken up when running the old style of crown magazine. So this is the old style of magazine and this is the new style. The shield of the new style is way thicker, allowing you to run longer slugs inside this mag well. Well, that little plastic piece takes up that extra space and now I can run a crown magazine, no problem. All right, so we got that taken care of. Uh, moving forward a little bit more, we've got the optic. I chose a Night Force NX-8 4 to 32. Uh, some of those long bomb stages, you're gonna want a little bit more power. Uh, maybe you might see your splash in the dirt if you miss the target and you'll have a better idea of the correction. Um, with that being said, those corrections, using a dirty reticle, so it's like a Christmas tree, so from your center line, you'll see the dots work their way down your objective. And those help because if you miss a shot, chances are wherever that slug or pellet splashes in the dirt, you'll have a dot that aligns with that splash and you can make a quick correction that way. <clears throat> Something that helps me a lot with uh, actually making more impact is a level. Now, there's a lot of different level options out there. I like the digital send it level because it has blinking LED lights. So they really catch your eye and almost force you to make your rifle level. The traditional bubble levels are really easy to miss and ignore. And in my opinion, if it's easy to ignore and not use, why would you put it on your rifle? 
So, I mean, can't, if you're even slightly canted, you will most likely miss a minute of angle target at 100 yards. So if it'll manifest in that short of time, imagine how off you'll be at 200, 300 yards. Uh, all right, so we've got a dope card, a uh, lot of precision rifle um, competition shooters will run a dope card. Basically, before your stage starts, you'll arrange all your targets, and I'll put the, you'll put those through your ballistic solution. So whether that be an app or a Kestrel, I use a Kestrel 5700 Elite, and I'll go through, put all my ranges in, it'll spit the dope out for me, and I'll write all those down with a wet erase marker, because when it's raining, you don't want things to get smudged as easily. And even when it's dry, I've smudged my card before a stage before, and uh, that was kind of a nightmare to navigate through the stage with half my dope smeared off. So definitely recommend a wet erase and a dope card. I have a homemade dope card holder, just a silicone cable tie with an alligator clip. Works really well, and you can remove it easily, and if your buddy needs to borrow one, you can easily take it off your scope, let him use it, and switch back after the stage is over. All right, moving on, I have a Gray Ops Mini Plate Pro, and that has insertable weights. Um, a huge problem, I wouldn't necessarily call it a problem, but an aspect of precision rifle is balance. So traditionally, powder burning rifles have a better balance. It's more forward than air guns would do, but this rifle has brought things a lot further and it's a lot easier to get this rifle to balance. Uh, along with weight, this plate adds width. Uh, width is awesome when you're on a barricade and you have, you know, it is a taller profile gun, so it's easier to tip left and right. Having a wider base makes it so your rifle is less tippy. It also has a slight curve to it which helps to grab your shooting bags a little easier, and that's gonna stabilize your shot too. All right. Along with the Gray Ops plate, I have Gray Ops weights. Uh, American made, awesome guy, supports our sport. Definitely check out Gray Ops. He made these hybrid weights that bolt to an M-lock, and basically they have a slot in it to allow you to bolt another weight on the top of that. So you can now stack weights this way, which again, widens your platform and adds weight in the front to help balance that rifle out. Huge, huge helper in precision rifle is a bipod. Um, one like this, an MDT Skypod, you have super quick elevation adjustments, easy to put back. You have panning and you have cant. And it holds robust enough that I can leave it on the table and it holds itself. Like I'm not doing anything to it. It's holding sturdy. I trust it. So definitely check out Skypod. AccuTac makes great products too. I just chose to run this because I get a little bit more elevation adjustment and it's quick. So that's my bipod set up there. On the very end, I'm running an impulse moderator. It is the 1200 model. Uh, I really like it. It's super light. It, I like the pitch, the, the noise pitch that it makes compared to other moderators. It's modular, so I can just make it shorter. I can add some, and it just looks cool, and is also American-made. Huge supporter of our scene as well. Make sure to check out Impulse if you haven't already. It's sweet stuff. <clears throat> Let's see, what else? We've got my ammo. I choose Xan projectiles. This gun really loves the 33 grain 218 slugs. I'm shooting them at about, I don't know, 1,000 FPS or so. Uh, super good BC of 0.107. I like running the higher BC stuff because I tend to have a lot less wind drift that I would see in a 24, 25 grain slug. And this gun is, it comes with the power. I don't need to do, I didn't add any kind of power upgrades to it. All I did was bump the reg from 135 to 145. Um, you know, that's usually standard when you're running a higher uh, grain per caliber slug. 
So no tungsten, no pin probe, none of that. Uh, shooting just fine. Plenty of power right out of the box. These Zan slugs, though, the way they come packaged, adds a lot of consistency to your shot. So you don't have damages like you see in other manufacturers. I think that kind of separates these, honestly. And they come very clean. If you roll it through your fingers, you'll have hardly any residue left. And that just keeps your barrel cleaner, uh, less maintenance, more consistent shots. You might wonder what this is. This is a side shot scope cam. Uh, when you're filming your shots, some people like to do that. It helps show, um, excuse me, it helps show newer shooters kind of what to look for. If you wanted to do kind of like a, a film review, a lot of pro athletes will film how they did and what was going on so they can analyze after the match or after the game. So basically the way this attaches is there's a ring that mounts around your tube and you will slide these prongs through the ring all the way up to your eye relief there or your objective. You will then cinch these knobs down and that will hold those prongs in place and you will look through this and you can see what your scope should see and then the GoPro films it on a 90 degree mirror that will reflect into the GoPro and uh, yeah, it's just a cool, simple way to film your shots and show people what you're up to. Now that we've talked about the overview of the rifle and the gear and why I chose that, let's go show you how it works. So now I've got the rifle and I've got my shooting bag. It is a Schmedium Game Changer from Armageddon and we did a custom edition for Utah Air Guns. So basically, you'll come up to your barricade. This is a tank trap. So you'll set your bag in, settle it in, and you'll drop your rifle on it. You want that rifle to dig into the bag a bit, and you want to kind of nudge it in there, get it to settle just right, okay? So with this, I cannot balance my rifle. Now if I tried that with an impact, it would be on the ground right now. This rifle somewhat holds itself there, which makes it a lot easier to get yourself on target. Uh, when you're not fighting your shoulder into the rifle, it is so much easier to control the wobble zone of your reticle and keep that on target. So now that we've talked about the balance and why it's important in a competition-based rifle, let's just show you how it works here. So you can see I've got all my weights here. We're going to just settle it in that bag. And okay, so the rifle is holding itself here, right? So that's important because when your rifle will seat itself into position, it is so much easier for you to find your targets, to move around, to adjust, when you're not also fighting the rifle to stay shouldered. A rear heavy rifle, you gotta keep trying to get it into place, right? Where this, all I have to do is walk up, close my bolt, and fire. So from position one, we'll now lift up our rifle, make sure your bolt's open, grab your bag, and we'll go to the next position. So that'll be the crotch of the tank trap here. Set that rifle down. Got my knee here for support, and my elbow welds to the knee. Then find my target, close my bolt, engage. Okay, bolt open, lift the rifle up, grab my bag, to our third position, okay? Settle that bag. All the weight up here really helps dig into that bag. Okay? Wide knees, square up to the target, acquire target, close bolt, engage target. Bolt open. Moving on to position four. Set our bag there. See how easy that just fits onto the bag? It's like it wants to be there. Perfect weld, feels so solid. Like if I push into that, the gun does not rattle. It's the tank trap that rattles. That's kind of what you want. You do not want a rattly rifle. Something else that's cool is, you see the, that texturing on the brass weight? That grabs the uh, wax canvas and other material very well. Like that thing does not slide for nothing. So 
We've gone over a tank trap. Let's head over to a situation where you might utilize your sky pod. So over here, we've got some uneven terrain. Let's say at this stage per se, we have a window that we have to shoot through. There's trees all around. We can only shoot from this particular position, right? Okay, so bag probably isn't gonna be as useful. So we'll set that to the side. And we will adjust the bipod to work for us. Okay, so kind of uneven here, but you see how quickly I adjusted that elevation out and how much I have in general? That's, that's pretty next level. Like you have a lot of elevation there. Not quite as sturdy as I would have hoped, but you see how I can utilize my legs in different positions to make it work. We'll show you another one here. So we'll go, hmm, we'll go between these two here, okay? So, all right, not quite enough. Boom. And easy to put away. Ready to go to the next stage. So I'm about to approach the tank trap. I set my bag down, set that gun on top of it, and when the gun weighs as much as it does, it really settles into that bag. Uh, it's really important to settle in, especially on the tip of a tank trap where it's so tippy. You want everything going for you when you're shooting off those tips. So as you can see, I've widened my stance a little bit too, and that helps me get the perfect elevation behind the gun. That way I'm not using my shoulder to get that elevation and pan. Moving on to the next slide, you can see there's a folding chair. Um, with the Pantera, where it has such a small um, vertical profile, it fits in between that space very easily. The impacts and crowns that were shooting on my squad that day did not fit in that space, so they suffered on some points there. Obviously, the Pantera is the move for that obstacle. Super small, fits in just fine, and uh, <clears throat> again, it's super balanced, so when I'm on the spine of the chair, I'm still feeling pretty stable. Moving on, we have the ladder and tire stage. So you can see it's settled down really nice on top of that tire. I mean, I'm not straining anything. Ideally, you want no muscles engaged when you're shooting. So going down onto the prone stage, I mean, that's a pretty wide open prop. So um, a variety of air guns could fit through that. It's just they're not going to have the same balance as the Pantera has. So you're going to end up putting a lot more shoulder into the gun than you would like. Um, that's going to make your wobble zone grow and you're going to see a lot more heartbeat in those stages. So the less feedback you put into the shoulder, the better. Now that we've gone over two stages and how I would approach them and what gear I would use, let's hear what you guys would use and how you approach stages down in the comments.